I'm here at Dixie Four Wheel Drive in Moab, Utah, where I have a very unique opportunity. I've got six bone stock Jeep Wrangler Rubicons. I've got access to six different manufacturers lift kits. We've got a whole lot of 37 inch tires and we're gonna take a look at these kits, get them installed, and then we're gonna see how they performed. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and I am super excited about the project we are doing here at Dixie Four Wheel Drive this week. We have a really unique opportunity to do something that I don't think has ever been done before. Six bone stock Jeeps, six different lift kits, and the ability to install them so I can give you my opinion on how well they performed. This is gonna be pretty cool and I think a little bit of fun. You know, I get asked all the time, what's the best lift kit for my Jeep? And there is no right answer to that. Everybody has a unique need for how they're gonna use their vehicle. Maybe their Jeep is a daily commuter and they take it out on the weekends from time to time. Maybe it's a hardcore rock crawler and a dedicated weekend only vehicle. Maybe they're hitting the mild trails. What's their budget like? Uh, are they have the ability to install it in their garage or they have to pay somebody to do it? There's a lot of factors that go into deciding on what the best lift kit is. So hopefully by taking a look at these lift kits, which are not the same, hopefully you'll be able to make a good informed decision. Now, the one thing I'll say is make sure when you are choosing a lift kit that you go with a good quality manufacturer and make sure that they're Jeep enthusiasts like the six in this comparison. You want a manufacturer that's making products for a Jeep that they use themselves and they love to go off-road. So that's something to think about. Check out all these 37 inch tires that I've got behind me. These are all going to be used for this comparison to make sure that each Jeep has the same 37 inch tire. Now, before I show you these lift kits that we're going to be installing, I want to reiterate this is not an apples to apples comparison. These lift kits are different from one another. We've got some lift kits that are two inches, two and a half, three and a half, four inches. Some of the lift kits are $1,200. Some of them are as much as almost $4,000. Some of these are a quick and easy install and some of them are gonna be a little more complicated. But I think that is part of this comparison because maybe you haven't decided on, should I just go simple and cheap or should I get something that's you know, more expensive and has a lot more components and features. That is part of what we're going to be doing here. Now, I think it's important that I offer some grading in this. So I'm going to give you my top two in a few categories. The first category is ease of install. How hard were these to install on the Jeeps? Were the instructions good? Were there any unique features? Do we have to do any special modifications that we didn't know about in ahead of time? We just want to talk about the install. So I'll give you my top two in that category. Then I'm going to take them all out on the road and I'm going to drive them on the road, on the freeway, on some back roads and tell you how comfortable they were. Then we're going to go hit it hard on the trail and see how well they performed out there. I'll give you my best two valued lift kits, which ones I think you get the most bang for your buck. And then I'll choose an overall winner for this comparison. I'm super excited about this. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. All right, let's take a look at the six lift kits we're installing. First up is the Rock Crawler 3.5 inch X Factor No Limits mid arm system, which retails for $3,876. Now we're going to take a look at the AEV 2.5 inch dual sport RT suspension, which sells for $1,379. We'll also be taking a look at the Icon Vehicle Dynamics 2.5 inch Stage 1 suspension lift for $1,222. We'll also take a look at the Rock Jock Pro Edition 4 inch suspension lift which has an MSRP of $3,914 and that does not include the price of the shocks which is an additional $676 for a grand total of $4,000. $590, making this the most expensive kit in this comparison. We're also going to take a look at the Dynatrack Enduro Sport 2 inch suspension lift, which sells for $1,199, making it the least expensive kit in this comparison. The sixth kit we'll be looking at is the Terraflex 3.5 inch Sport ST3 suspension paired with these Falcon SP2 3.3 shocks which retails for $2,819. Now 
Now, over the next several days, the guys here at Dixie Four Wheel Drive will rip out the old Jeep suspensions and install these new ones. Let's take a closer look up of what's provided in these lift kit systems, and I'll share my thoughts with you on how the installation went. Now, the Rock Crawler 3.5 inch mid arm kit system is an impressive bolt on comprehensive suspension kit that includes triple rate coil springs, front and rear 2.25 RRD spec shocks all new adjustable upper and lower front and rear control arms, front and rear adjustable track bars to help ensure you can keep your axles centered, sway bar links, spring correction pads, track bar relocation bracket, and bump stops. This kit was designed for Rubicon owners who want maximum articulation from a mid-arm lift with excellent highway ride and improved off-road ability. Now, no hard copy instructions were provided in this box, but there is a card with a QR code to go download the instructions. The online instructions are good, provided some nice details, and had some good color pictures. Now, the rock crawler install was easy work for the Dixie team, but if someone wants to do this kit on their garage floor, it would probably take them two or three days, a good part of a long weekend to get this done, just because it is such a comprehensive kit. There was some good information provided about the required measurements of all the adjustable components, which is great. One unique thing about the rock crawler kit that is recommended that you drill a hole on top of both front control arm brackets so that way you can face the Zerk fitting upward and make it easier to service. We used a plasma cutter, but a simple metal hole saw would do the work just fine. Okay, Bryce, you guys have been messing with these lower control arms. Can you just tell us really quickly what's going on? Yeah, because they're adjustable, the grease are extending to the top side or the bottom side. If you go on the bottom side, it's more likely to hit a, a rock or be damaged. In this case, you can see here where we had a paint mark. Rock crawler calls for a hole saw cutout to, be, to clear their jamna or their greaser. We just wanted to measure to see exactly how far with the shock drooped out did we really need to take to give maximum strength on the controller mount. Okay, cool. But really no worries structurally cutting that up though, right? No, I don't think there is a problem, but we wanted to be safe. You know, these Jeeps are going to get used kind of hard, so we want to be as maximum and more precise to where it needs to be as cool. well. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Now, one of the details I like about the Rock Crawler kit is the puck style bump stops. Now to use these bump stops, you do have to drill a larger hole in each perch, but having the ability to add and remove pucks to adjust your bump stop is a cool feature that I really like. Now the only very minor hiccup we encountered during this entire install was the supplied Zerk fittings were the incorrect size, but the guys at Dixie had a full box on hand, so no big deal. All in all, the Rock Crawler kit is solid, well constructed, and the installation was fairly straightforward. Next up is the Rock Jock Pro 4-inch suspension, which offers dual rate springs front and rear. Now what I really like is that each spring is clearly labeled as they are tuned for each corner of the vehicle. Now these are a dual rate spring with an initial soft rate that absorbs small bumps and a firmer secondary rate to help soak up those larger impacts. Also included are eight Johnny Joint control arms, front and rear track bars, front and rear bump stops, and what sets this kit apart from the rest in this review is they provide a front and a rear anti-rock sway bar kit. And the anti-rock is a very popular option for many off-roaders because it gives you good on-road stability, but when you go hit the trails, you don't have to manually disconnect anything. I'm looking forward to seeing how well this performs off-road. As I mentioned earlier, the shocks are not included with this kit and they recommend pairing them up with either some King shocks or these Fox shocks, which are specced for this four inch lift. Now the instructions supplied were great with lots of details and pictures. I'm a big stickler for instructions and I think sometime manufacturers don't do a good job in this area. Rock Jock got it right. Now the installation of the Rock Jock kit went really well. There was no cutting required for this kit. The only slight bit of custom work required was to drill and tap the bump stop perches. But the control arms, springs, and track bars all installed with no issues. Now the anti-rock sway bars did add extra time to this install because you first need to remove the front and rear sway bars and then install the anti-rocks. We did have a slight challenge on the rear getting the anti-rock bushing to fit, but a little grinding of both the bushing and the Jeep with a little grease and some good motivation and they finally went in. The front did bolt up right up with no issues. 
All right, so we are midway through day one and the guys are almost done with the rock crawler kit and the rock jock kit. And these are the two most complex kits we have here in this test. One thing to keep in mind is both of these kits have eight arm control arm links. And that means if you're gonna install this in your garage, it means a little more time that you're gonna be spending doing that. Or if you're gonna pay somebody, it's gonna cost you around 10 hours of labor. So one thing to keep in mind when you're factoring in your budget for your lift kit. The rest of the afternoon was spent finishing up the final details on both of these lift kits. Torquing everything down, paint marking the bolts, rerouting the parking brakes, ensuring that all the brake and ABS lines had plenty of clearance, and of course setting the alignment. It was a long day in the shop, but the guys did an amazing job getting these two kits done. Now tomorrow, we'll get some wheels and tires on there and we'll get these things on the ground. Well, good morning. It's day two here at Dixie Four Wheel Drive and we got a lot of work done yesterday. They finished the kit install for the Rock Crawler and the Rock Jock kits. We've just got to do some measurements, some fine tuning, and then we're going to flex them out and see how well they perform and we'll get them out and drive them. And then we're going to get the next two Jeeps on the lift today and hopefully get the TerraFlex and the AEV kits installed. We've done a lot of work, but we still got a lot more to go. We've got to get started. The first thing we did this morning was put the new wheels and tires on the now outfitted rock crawler Jeep and began checking clearance and taking some measurements, but more on how all the Jeeps compared flexed out later. We did encounter one challenge with the now outfitted rock jock Jeep. With the wheel and tire combo we're using, we had a significant amount of rub on the anti-rock. Now their kit and a few others in this comparison recommend a different backspacing than the wheels we are using. And we did anticipate some slight rubbing using these wheels, but only the rock jock kit were we unable to even drive with these wheels. So we commandeered some 37 inch tires off another Jeep and those will be exclusively used only on this one. All the other Jeeps in this comparison, we were able to run the wheel and tires we had available. One thing to consider if you are buying a lift kit is you may need to purchase new wheels. Okay, now on to the other lift kits. The TerraFlex 3.5 inch Sport ST3 suspension system is designed to offer true street and trail performance. The kit comes with front and rear coil springs, front control arm drop brackets, which help restore caster on taller lifts. And TerraFlex states that these are built to take a hit. This kit does include the Falcon 3.3 shocks, which are the only adjustable shocks in this comparison. Also included are some new progressive bump stops with shims allowing you to fine tune your bump stop. There are front and rear track bar relocation brackets, new sway bar links and a rear drop pad, and something that I'm a fan of, and that is these front brake line anchors. Now I'm gonna make a very bold statement here. TerraFlex, hands down, has the best instructions in this comparison, but honestly, out of any manufacturer component I have ever installed on my Jeep, no one has had instructions that are this detailed and easy to read. Very nice. The TerraFlex kit bolted right up with no problems and only a little bit of drilling required to the front and rear track bar brackets. The front control arm drop brackets bolted right in, but did take just a little wiggling to get the holes lined up. The guys did have to cut some holes in the plastic to fit the shocks, but TerraFlex included a template which makes it a very easy process. Compared to the two kits we installed yesterday, this took several hours less. Okay, now let's take a look at the AEV kit. The AEV Dual Sport RT suspension is their expedition ready suspension. This kit is engineered to handle the load capacity and maintain the ride quality for those setting off on long treks and carrying heavy cargo loads. The springs are triple rated coils and I like that they're not black. That lets everybody know that there's something a little different going on with your suspension. They are paired with Bilstein 5100 shocks that have a slightly firmer and sportier feel than stock. The AEV kit provides a pair of stamped control arm geometry brackets, a rear track bar tower extension, extended front and rear sway bar links, front and rear bump stops, and two special items included in this kit are the ProCal snap which allows you to recalibrate your speedometer and the Jeep JL jack base which works with your factory scissor jack and is nice to have if you run larger tires. 
The AEV instructions can be downloaded on their website and are very good with nice details and diagrams that can easily help you see what's required. The AEV instructions were my second favorite out of this entire group. Now, because AEV and TerraFlex are the only two kits in this comparison to offer the front control arm geometry correction brackets, I put them side to side just to see how different they were. Now, the one from AEV is stamped steel, and the TerraFlex one is steel pieces that are welded together. I think they're both very solid, but just picking them up, the TerraFlex felt a little more substantial. Installing the AEV kit was a very straightforward process. There was no drilling or cutting with this kit. Everything bolted right up, and I like that because if you want to make any changes in the future, you can easily revert back to your stock components or use new components that don't have to be re-modified to fit the modifications you've already made. I think this kit could easily be installed in an afternoon in someone's garage with some basic hand tools. Okay, that's four kits down, two more to go, and then we'll get into the details, the nitty gritty of this comparison. Well, good morning. It is day three here at Dixie Four Wheel Drive. We got a lot accomplished yesterday. We got two more Jeep lift kits installed, and today the guys are already hard at work behind me doing the last two Jeeps, and then we'll have all six done. Then we can start fine tuning everything and start getting some good measurements. And then maybe by this afternoon, I might do a little bit of road testing, and then we're gonna really hit it hard here in the next couple days and go hit it off road and see how well these lift kits perform. So we still got quite a bit to do, but we are getting there. Next up is the Icon Vehicle Dynamics 2.5 inch Stage 1 lift kit, which was designed for the driver looking to improve on and off road performance and ride quality. This kit includes dual rate springs, aluminum body 2.0 shocks, which are fully serviceable, bump stop spacers, sway bar links, and all the necessary hardware. This kit is their most basic lift kit package, but because they offer eight total stages of lift systems, you can use this as the beginning foundation and upgrade using their other stage components over time. Nothing difficult here with this installation. Springs, shocks, bump stops, and the links went on with no trouble. The directions were adequate and everything was a straightforward bolt-on process that really didn't take very long. The last kit we are taking a detailed look at is the Dynatrack 2-inch Enduro Sport Suspension. And one of the little things that I really appreciated being prior military was this lift kit comes in this old style sea bag. I really like this and I might have gone home with this bag after the comparison. Dynatrack engineered this kit to have a better ride quality, handling, and stability than factory and to be a good fit for everyday family use and weekend off-road treks. Included in the kit are four new coil springs, Fox 2.0 Performance Series aluminum body shocks that have been exclusively valved for this suspension, brake line extensions, bump stops, and sway bar end leaks. While this is only a two inch lift, Dynatrack states that the Jeep JL Rubicon, you can still run a 37 with zero cutting required. Now, even though there are only a few components to this kit, Dynatrack still provided nine pages of instructions, which was very helpful. Now, this kit should only take about four hours to install with some basic hand tools, but the guys here at Dixie Four Wheel Drive blasted through installing the springs, shocks, bump stops, and brake line bracket in no time. This is a straightforward, no cutting bolt on kit. All right, we are done with the last two lift kits and we've already started throwing the Jeeps up on the forklift and getting some good measurements. I mean, look at that flex, man. It's going to be so exciting to see how well all of these Jeeps flex out. And I've already started getting some seat time. While these guys have been in here doing some measurements, I've been out there driving them on the road, driving them on the trail, just getting a feeling for them. But tomorrow we'll get serious about really getting some good information and start sharing with you how well they drive on road and how well they drive off-road so we'll see you guys tomorrow okay now for the numbers and the first measurement is the overall lift each Jeep gained over stock that was determined using a measurement from the shock top bolt eyelet to the bottom bolt eyelet on the ground and on each corner to give a true number increase over stock this does not include the gain received with the 37 inch tires this is just suspension lift gain Using the shock bolt as a fixed measurement point prevents any discrepancies that may come from the tires. 
Okay, here are the measurement results. No surprise that the rock jock was the tallest, but I think it was very interesting that both the AEV and the Icon kits, which are two and a half inch systems, both measure out equal to or higher than the 3.5 inch lift kits in this category. Now I know that AEV intentionally runs their kits a little taller because they expect those using it for expeditions will add a heavier load on their Jeep. But I was surprised that the Icon kit measured the second tallest out of the group. I think these are important numbers to look at if you are basing part of your lift kit decision on how high you wanna go. Things like, will your Jeep still fit in the garage with a roof rack, or will getting in and out of your Jeep be, just be too difficult as a daily driver are just some of the things that many folks consider when choosing how high they want to go on their lift kit. Now, when you look at all the Jeeps next to each other, there are only some very subtle differences overall, but they are notably taller than the stock white Jeep here. The stance on all the Jeeps looks great in my opinion, just enough lift to fill out that 37 inch tire in the wheel well. Okay, now let's talk flex measurements. Now I found the flex numbers very interesting. This was just a straight bottom of the tire to ground measurement at full flex from each corner of the Jeep with three other tires still barely just touching the ground. We also took a close look at where the suspensions were rubbing, but I'm not going to report on that in this comparison because again, each manufacturer has a recommendation for wheel backspacing which we were not able to accommodate for this test, so it wouldn't be fair to talk about where they were rubbing. Here are the results, and I really expected a rock jock to come out on top here, but I wonder if the shock length was the limiting factor keeping this from its full potential. Rock Crawler crushed the competition, and again, Icon, the 2.5 inch lift, was number two on our measurement scale. Now, while it's great to have all these numbers and be able to provide some objective data, at the end of the day, it comes down to how well they perform on road and on the trail. And in the next video, I'll get all these Jeeps out and put them through their paces, and we'll see how well they performed through a variety of terrains. And I'll just leave you with this. Just because they were the tallest or flexed out the most didn't mean they performed the best. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.